Hey guys, how's it going? It's Constantine the Third here, and welcome back to Constantine Coaches. This time we got some Jinx gameplay coming out of Josh Deninja. Thanks so much for sending me this replay, Josh. He had some special instructions for me. This isn't going to be a normal episode of Constantine Coaches. Instead of looking at the entire gameplay review like we did last time, we're going to take a look at some of his late game deaths, as was his specific request. He wanted to know if some of his deaths were unnecessary late game. So let's look at some of his late game deaths, see if they were in fact unnecessary, and how he could have avoided them. Oh, and before we get started, let's check out this tasty Jinx rocket. And I'm not going to show them all, but seriously, throughout this entire game, Josh has like two, three, four insane cross-the-map snipes on people. He definitely earned the level 7 on Jinx, that's all I'm going to say about that. Anyway, let's take a look at your first death here. So whenever you want to break down a reason why you died or a mistake you made in League of Legends, it's important to understand the pretense or what was happening beforehand, if that makes any sense. Obviously, we could just break down you being killed by Fizz, but that wouldn't really help you out too much, would it? We want to talk about the decisions that you made that led to you dying to Fizz. So let's start by breaking down the situation. Let's look at what is actually happening in the game. To start off, let's talk about where you are right now as Jinx. You're level 11. You have Infinity Edge and Runan's Hurricane. And you have Blue Buff. So you are like... You are the main man in this game right now. You are on, like, three different power spikes right now. You are insanely strong. So you are ready to just destroy shit. Unfortunately, you are not present in the team fight up in top lane. If you look at my mouse right here, there's people down here. You are not present there. So, if you're not present for a team fight, what you should be doing is taking an objective while your team fights. And that's exactly what you're doing. You're pushing out the bot lane. You also know, or at least you might not have realized this at the time, but you definitely are, safe to do so. Why? Let's think about the situation for a second. First off, two enemies are dead right here, right? Poppy and Fizz, they're pushing up daisies for another 15 seconds. And then Ezreal's up in the top lane just getting, you know, absolutely shit on by three different people at once. And Karma's running for her goddamn life. So there is one person that can possibly challenge your control for this tower, and it is Thresh. Thresh is not going to be able to 1v1 a Jinx on three different power spikes. That's just, that's not, no. You don't have to worry about that. So what should you be doing? You should be pushing out this lane. And that is exactly what you do. You're charging down the lane. You're like, I'm Jinx. I'm ready to fuck shit up. You activate your rockets for wave clear. That's awesome. Get the Hurricane AoE rockets. I love that part of her kit. And you're just destroying shit. So you get up to this tower. And you're thinking to yourself, hopefully, okay, Fizz and Poppy have just respawned. Whenever somebody goes back to the summoner platform after 20 minutes, they get a pretty significant speed boost. I know about 8 seconds before Fizz and Poppy show up to absolutely destroy me. So, if I were any other ADC in the game, I should probably run away at this point. But you are smart. You know that you are Jinx. You know your passive, get excited, gives you a huge movement speed boost after you get a kill, assist, or kill a tower. So, you stay, and you take the tower. And that is very smart. Because again, you know, and even if you look at the minimap, you can see that not even Thresh is here. It's literally just Poppy and Fizz, so you know you're safe to take this tower. And you're kidding it, you're hitting it, you're hitting it, you're hitting it, and it's dead. Alright, and you have this huge movement speed boost, and you're dipping out. And you look at the minimap, and you're like, damn, I am a smart motherfucker. Look right here. There's Fizz and Poppy coming to kill me. I knew this was going to happen. So then you run away, and this happens. And this fatal mistake happens. If you look at the minimap... Again, where my mouse is right now, Fizz and Poppy are right over here. You are Jinx. You have no escapes. You have a slow spell that's super easy to dodge and flame chompers that Fizz can hop over. You do not want to be within a mile of these guys unless your team is right next to you. But you got greedy. You got really greedy, and you're like, I'm going to take this gromp real quick. And even if I if I unmuted this video, which I won't, your friend is shouting at you before this, now's not the time to do Gromp, man, you shouldn't be doing Gromp right now, but you ignored him, and you kept doing Gromp, and you're about to get punished for it. So Fizz obviously leaps over the wall, and he gets on you, and he starts fucking you up. Now, here's another big mistake that you made. You popped heal and flash. Like, let's see this, okay? Now, you're, you're running away from Fizz, right? There's, like, running away from Fizz as Jinx is kind of like trying to beat an F-150 jet in a race using a camel that has syphilis. It's just... No. <laughs> it 
it does it's never going to work. Like, you see how much distance you have on him right now? Yet yeah, one playful trickster gets him in flash distance, and he's just, yeah, no, you're done. So, against a Fizz, there's no reason to burn your summoner spells like that, because you're just going to die anyway. So, what did we learn here? You have to watch your minimap, man. You were definitely not watching your minimap when that death happened. You got the tower, you had a good score, and you were feeling good, and you tried to counter jungle. That's just... As Jinx, you are a hyper carry. You absolutely need your team to help you out in order to do things like team fight, and they need to peel Fizz off of you because you, you as a champion, you can't do it yourself. It is not possible for Jinx to peel Fizz off of herself unless the Fizz is just playing like absolute garbage and you are double lift. There's, it's almost impossible. Important lesson to take away here: this death was completely unnecessary because if you would have just looked at your mini map and realized that two assassins were chasing your ass down and you would have just left and not gone for Gromp, you'd have been totally fine. All right, moving on to death numero dos. Here's the situation again that we're breaking it down. You now have tier two boots, Ruinans, Hurricane, Fin in the Edge, Mats for Blade, Cutlass, Bloodthirst. You have Life Steal and a Longsword. Okay. Good stuff. All right, so you've got still got a really good amount of damage. You're not as strong as you were before because, obviously, nature of power spikes, you were stronger earlier in comparison to your enemies. Now you're a little bit more even in power, but that's okay. You're grouped up with four of your teammates, and Rise is split-pushing top, and the dragon is about to spawn. So there are a lot of ways that you guys could team fight this. You could try to dance around the dragon and wait for someone to go back top to stop Rise and then engage a fight. You could try to force the dragon. You could try to pick Karma or Fizz, who are currently by themselves. There's a lot of ways that you guys can fight this. So, let's see what happens. Also, important to note, Nar does not have Mega Nar ready yet. So you're going to walk in here, you're going to poke at W. So you see that, you know Fizz was just mid, and that there are three enemies over here, and... Troubling sign. Rise has decided to recall... I don't know if he has teleport ready or not, but he should have really kept pushing this lane. So that's something that's out of your control right now. Those flame choppers right there, big mistake. That's I think this is where things start going wrong. Completely unnecessary to root Poppy there. She's a tank, right? You don't have to worry about that. What you needed flame choppers for was this man over here. So... Right now, I'm just going to let you know, I can already, I haven't watched the full replay through yet, but I can already tell you what's going to happen right here. Fizz is coming from the side, you guys are clustered in the middle. Some people are going to go in, some people are going to run away, and you're going to get picked by Fizz. I just, I'm imagining that's what's going to happen. Okay, so let's break it down right here, now what's happening. So, Morgana is up over here somewhere doing something. She ran the wrong way. Your team was clearly pulling back this way. You guys realized you were getting flanked. You made a very good positioning choice right here. You pulled back and you let your enemy, your allies get engaged on by Fizz. So in perfect world scenario, what happens is that Lissandra ults Fizz's ass. Morgana flashes the wall to make up for her positioning mistake, brutes him, stuns him with her ult or something. Nar peels for you guys, and Ezreal, uh, I don't know, he joins his team in the back, but you out-DPS him because you're a better champion. So, let's see what actually happens. So, she roots him. She doesn't ult him. Oh, no. Oh, man. Wow. What is she doing? Oh, my God. And Morgana got... Wow. Okay, and... Oh, my God. All right. Okay. That death right there was... <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. All right, let's rewind this for a second. So let's let's break this down one more time, okay? So, again, right here, this is where the huge fuck-up happened. So, see how Fizz is rooted right here? I just pointed at the scream, hi, you can't see me, how's it going? Um, you see how Fizz is rooted right here? You pull out your rocket launcher, good choice, you don't want to get close to him. Right now, Lissandra needs to immediately ult him, because he is an assassin, and what you do is, Lissandra, is you ult assassins so they can't blow up your ADC. But she doesn't! I don't... I don't know why she doesn't. And then Nar goes mega, and he uses his ult when Fizz is on Playful Trickster. This is hurting me to watch so much. And then you're like, wait, team, there was no CC on the assassin. Wait, wait. <laughs> oh, God, yeah, and then you just get absolutely shit on. Okay. Yeah, that was... Whew. 
Yeah, that was interesting. Uh, your, your your teammates picked a very uh, very unique way to play that team fight. I uh, okay. Um, if you would have saved flame choppers there, you would have had a better chance of surviving. You okay? Let me phrase it this way: Your Lissandra was a complete potato that fight. She was one hundred percent spud. There was that was ridiculous. She should have absolutely ulted Fizz the minute she got that root on him. Fizz was an idiot. He dove onto two really tanky people who were CC bots. He should have just been CC to oblivion while you blew him up to rockets. There was no reason for your team to potato like that, but they absolutely just, they blew it. I mean, that's all I gotta say is they completely fucked that up. But you also screwed up because you wasted your flame chompers on Poppy. So if you would have saved your flame chompers there, you could have rooted Fizz again after the Lissandra route ended, and then maybe Nar wouldn't have whiffed his ult trying to use it on a Fizz in the middle of his playful trickster, and that would have happened. But your positioning was good, you were standing in the right spot, that's about the only thing I could think of that could have made that team fight go better. But honestly, as a hyper carry like Jinx, you need your team, like I was saying earlier with that death against Fizz, to use their CC on these assassins so you can get all of your damage off, and they just totally let you down there. If that death was... 90% not your fault. I'm I'm not going to fault you for that. You even ran in. I could tell. You were like, oh, man, we, I have so much CC on my team and Fizz got caught. Surely. Surely they aren't going to whiff every single fucking CC. But you were, nope, nope. You got potatoed, man. That happens sometimes. I, I wouldn't worry too much about that one. That was, ooh, that was hard to watch. And honestly, the last death that you had in this match really isn't even worth talking about. You overstayed after Fizz respawned. That's literally it. I mean, he had a Banshee's Veil, so Morgana couldn't ult him. Yeah, it's just not really worth talking about, man. I wouldn't even worry about that one. The first two are something to take note of, but that last death, nothing to even put your mind on. So what are the big takeaways I want you to have for this episode of Constantine Coaches? Well, number one, I want you to understand what Jinx is. Jinx, as I'm sure you know, is a hyper carry. Jinx does not have a lot of escapes. She has decent self-peel with flame chompers, but that's on like a literal 25-second cooldown. So that's not very efficient. So if you want to do well in team fights and not die late game, you need to stay with your team, you need to position well in team fights, which means stay in the back, away from the assassins, you need to turn on the assassins when they jump on you, and you need to get good peel. In some fights, you had absolutely atrocious peel, and that's why you died. In other fights, you simply mispositioned, overstayed, or just got greedy for extra stuff like a gromp when you should have just ran away. Overall, you need to respect assassins more and appreciate the fact that they can absolutely shit on you if you're not really careful around them. And that'll be all for the second episode of Constantine Coaches. I hope you guys learned some stuff and enjoyed my content. If you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe and check out my various guides I have on Mobifire if you're interested in playing those champions, namely Ziggs and Vayne. If you guys have more replays you want me to look over, more things to critique and coach, I'm always open to do so. Email me in the link below, drop me a comment on YouTube, Whatever your fancy is, just make sure you have a replay uploaded on YouTube since I doubt you want to email me an MP4. Anyway guys, take it easy. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.